What's up, Vikes? Today we'll be airing the interview with Mr. Kobach. And a glimpse at the new episode of Sagas. I'm Darren. And I'm Mason. And the show starts now. Saga will be airing a new episode tonight at 7.30. Let's go check it out. Hey Vikes, welcome back to the second episode of Sagas. I'm Regan Bond, your host. The theme for this show is family. Tonight's show, we look at a hashtag that brings our community together, a community resource room, a club that brings kids together, and a class that brings all kinds of students together. The fall play, You Can't Take It With You, is tonight, Friday and Saturday at 7. The tickets are $5. The Viking Brew members meeting is during seminar tomorrow in room W3. Life Drawing Night will be on November 8th in room 901 at 6. The Norris Nook will be open Friday, November 16th during lunch. Mr. Tinsley will also need students to help out in the school store at that time. If you are interested, stop by room E19. The Fine Arts Booster Club is having a banner competition. The last day to enter your design is December 21st. The winner will receive a $100 gift card. Now over to Mason with the sports after this commercial break. My name is Adam Schultz and I'm your FBLA president. This year, we are sponsoring a coat drive for Giving Tuesday. This is a competition that will be held between seminars. Bring coats, jackets, hats, gloves. All proceeds will be given back to the community. So check your closet, your cousin's closet, your neighbor's closet, your grandma's closet. Heck, even check Mr. Monahan's closet, if that's what it takes. Bring those items in to donate, and the winning seminar gets an ice cream party. So please donate, Seaman High and help make America warm again. What are you doing wearing purple? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? It's supposed to be red, white, blue. My apologies, sir. Freshmen and girls that want to play basketball should go to the informational meeting this Friday during activity period. Freshmen boys will also have an information meeting in the West Commons. For 10th through 12th grade girls, there will be a meeting in Coach Tinley's room after school. There will be a boys swim team meeting this Friday, November 2nd. Freshmen in the seminar during 1050 and 10th through 12th graders after school. Both meetings will be held in room 911. If you want to uh, go into a sport and already have a sports physical done for the up coming winter or spring sports, please turn in all forms to the athletic office. Tryouts for winter sports begin Monday, November 12th. You must have your physical and concussion form on file prior to tryouts. Uh, please stop into the athletic office to get a packet for all of the forms. We'll now head over to Jordan with the weather.
Hey Vikes, today Josh is in Chicago, so I'll be doing the weather. It's currently 57 degrees and tonight it'll be in the 40s. For your three day forecast, there'll be highs in the 50s and 60s and lows at 39. For tomorrow's football game, it's going to be about 50 degrees for kickoff and will drop during the game. Today in history is Little Peep turns 21 and men make dinner day. Now, back to your anchors. So recently I sat down with Secretary of State Chris Kobach and Senator Laura Kelly to talk about the upcoming election. Today we'll be showing the interview with Chris Kobach and tomorrow we'll be airing the interview with Laura Kelly. Let's get on to the interview with Mr. Kobach. Today I'm sitting down with a very special guest, uh, current Kansas Secretary of State and GOP candidate for uh, Kansas Governor, Chris Kobach. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. I know you're a busy man. Uh, the first question I really want to get into is something that I think is really important to a lot of Kansans, and that's, uh, what do you love about this state? Oh, so many things. I love the people of Kansas. I love the land of Kansas. I, mm -hmm. uh, I grew up here. Actually, I was born in Wisconsin, and my mm -hmm. folks moved to Topeka when I was seven, and I'm so glad they did. I mean, it's just an yeah. amazing place. Uh, it, you know, look, I, I went out east to college uh, mm -hmm. in the Boston area and then went to law school in Connecticut. And so I had a chance to see the rest of the country. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of Kansans maybe in high school are saying, oh man, I live in Kansas. We, people, we have a tendency uh -huh. in Kansas to uh, think of our state as not being as cool as some other states. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, I've lived in some places that people think are really cool mm -hmm. and I was in a hurry to get back to Kansas. <laughs> it's just, life is good here and yeah. we've got a lot going on. So. I, you know, especially if you're an outdoors person like I am. I love to, mm -hmm. to hike, mountain bike, hunt, camp, shoot. Uh, if you like doing things like that outdoors, Kansas is actually one of the best places in the country to do that. Yeah, awesome. And that kind of leads into my second question, and that's, what do you want for Kansas's future? Uh, I want Kansas to be a place where if my kids decide, well, let me rephrase that, I want Kansas to be a place where when my kids decide mm -hmm. where they're going to live, they say, you know, I want to live in Kansas. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, they've had the opportunity to travel around the country a little bit with me, mm -hmm. and I want them to make the same decision I did. And so in order for them to decide, hey, Kansas is where I want to put down my roots and raise my family, uh, then we're going to have to have low taxes. I mean, it, it is, you know, when you graduate from high school and, and start and then mm -hmm. and college or, or whatever training you go into, and then you start you know, relying on your own income, you're suddenly going to realize the government's taking a big chunk out of it. Yeah. And it makes it hard to make ends meet. And some states are better than others. And Kansas right now is not as good as it could be. The states around us actually have lower taxes than we do. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of young people are saying, hmm, if I'm going to decide whether to live, you know, get a job on the Missouri side or the Kansas side or the Oklahoma side or the Kansas side, mm -hmm. many of them are choosing the other state right now. And I want my girls, I have all daughters, uh -huh. I want them to choose to live in Kansas. And that's going to be getting our taxes down, and that's going to be doing some, some smart things in government. All right. And uh, kind of <coughs> going off those taxes, I mean, I was too young to really remember whenever Brownback did his major tax cuts. Mm -hmm. How would you say your tax cuts that you're willing to implement are different from those? And I guess, how are you willing to cut back on the government to make up for those tax cuts? So the, the big difference between uh, me and Brownback when it comes to tax cuts is mm -hmm. when Governor Brownback signed his tax cuts in 2012, mm -hmm. um, so revenue goes down when the, when the taxes are cut, yeah. but spending went up. So mm -hmm. uh, in 2013, the state set a new record in government spending, then in 2015, another new record. And so the, the, the spending line is going like this, while the revenue line, the tax revenue is going down, mm -hmm. and that created deficits. I'll be doing a, a completely different approach. We will be cutting spending immediately, and I can do that as governor. I can come right in and tell the agencies, okay, stop spending so much. And then once we've cut spending, then we will start cutting taxes, and there won't be a deficit, and it'll be a much more fiscally responsible way to cut taxes. Okay. And that kind of leads me into my next question, because obviously as a high school student, education is something really important yep. to me. How do you plan on funding K-12 through schools? So we have a constitutional obligation mm -hmm. to fund uh, public schools, and that's, that, that's, part, that's in the Kansas Constitution. It's, it's one of the most mm -hmm. important things that the legislature does. <clears throat> I think we've been spending way too much time as a state focusing on the total dollar amount mm -hmm. that we're spending on public schools. 
as opposed to looking at where the money's going. And so if we look at where the money's going and try to make sure it goes into the classroom, mm -hmm. then it'll be much better. That means teacher salaries, that means computers for the students, that means teaching material, mm -hmm. stuff that you actually experience yeah. as a student. Um, and I also think that spending money on fancy buildings, although it's, it's great to have a new building, uh -huh. I don't think it actually makes your high school experience any better. I went to Washburn Rural mm -hmm. <clears throat> way back before the Washburn Rural existed that you see today. Mm -hmm. The old building is like a, a small <laughs> shell inside the new, uh -huh. the new, the new building. And uh, back then, you know, it wasn't very fancy. We had uh, reading class. We had English classes in some uh, mobile homes outside the school. Mm -hmm gravel parking lot, you know, it just wasn't really fancy, but yeah. guess what? We had great teachers, and I did really well, and managed to get into Harvard. And it, it wasn't, it, the quality of the building didn't affect my education. I think every student, if you think about it, having a fancy new wall next to you while you're doing your work uh -huh. doesn't make you smarter. It doesn't make you better able to learn in high school. Okay. and. Uh Obviously, I'm a senior, and there's a lot of seniors getting ready to go off to college. It seems like every year the cost for going to college just yeah. continues to raise. Is there anything you plan on doing as governor that can kind of keep those prices down for us? Yeah, absolutely. So the governor uh, has the power to appoint members of the Board of Regents, mm -hmm. and uh, cutting costs is going to be a top priority for me. I think it's outrageous that the average, and this might scare some people on who are watching this, <laughs> uh -huh. but the average Kansan graduates from college with $28,000 in debt, 28 grand. That is insane. And just think about that. Yeah. Think about how long, what you could do with $28,000 and how long it takes to pay back $28,000. That has got to stop. And I'm someone who has been teaching in higher education. I was a law professor for 15 years. Um, there are increases in tuition that should not be happening. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that are justified, but we have got to get tuition under control. It can't be, right now, inflation's going like this. Looking over the past 20 years, inflation's like this. Tuition has been going way faster than the cost of inflation. And so we've got to get those costs under control. So I'll be looking at ways to, through the Board of Regents, to keep tuition hikes from being so great. And then there's some other things we can do, too. Uh, ways you can get an education without spending a fortune, like getting a year of college credit during your senior year in high school, mm -hmm. then getting another year or two of college credit at a community college, and then spending your final year at a KU or a K-State or, or Wichita State, whatever, mm -hmm. and getting that college degree, but at, a, at less than half the price. So programs like that, so that everybody who wants to get a college education can get it. And then the other thing we need to make sure is people should know that there are a lot of great jobs that don't require a college degree. Yeah. And so we've got good technical schools in Kansas that need to advertise and get the message out to uh, high school seniors. Like, you know, you can go to college if you want and, and more power to you, but you might actually want to train as an electrician and then start making 60 grand right after you get that training. Yeah. Degree. So there, and then maybe start your own company and make even more than that. So there are a lot of options people should understand are out there that uh, you know, are, are much financially more advantageous, uh, much more advantageous financially for the kid. All right, this is kind of uh, steering off onto a different topic, but okay. uh, you and Laura Kelly obviously differ on some topics. Uh, illegal immigration mm -hmm. is a really big problem in the state of Kansas and the Midwest. Uh, you've talked a lot about it. Can you kind of mind explaining uh, what you want to do about the problem and how you think that will better Kansas? Sure, yeah. I Laura Kelly and I are night and day on the illegal immigration yeah. issue. So let's just go through some of the uh, facets of it. Uh, mm -hmm. She wants to keep giving welfare benefits to illegal aliens. I say if you're going to take tax dollars out of my pocket and out of your pocket, don't give them to somebody who's illegally in the country. You're only encouraging that person to stay illegally in the country. We're at opposite ends of that. In-state tuition for illegal aliens. So many seniors are thinking now, okay, I'm can I afford to go to college? Here's, here's what my tuition is going to be, and maybe I'll get in-state, maybe I'm going somewhere else, I'm going to get out of state. Kansas is giving in-state tuition to illegal aliens when you know great U.S. citizens from Nebraska, Missouri, Colorado, Oklahoma, they have to pay three times as much in tuition. They followed all the rules. They're not breaking the law, but yet the illegal alien gets the tuition break, and they don't. Uh, Laura Kelly wants to continue to give in-state tuition breaks for illegal aliens. I want to stop it. 
um, sanctuary cities, sanctuary mm -hmm. counties. Kansas has three counties that are sanctuary counties, including Shawnee County, by the way. And Johnson County as well, right? Johnson County was a sanctuary okay. county, but the new sheriff uh, who came in a couple years ago changed the policy so it no longer is. And in a sanctuary county, when ICE calls the sheriff's office and says, look, you've got a criminal in your jail, and not just a, a garden variety, you know, illegal alien who's working and just doing nothing more than working illegally, you've got a criminal, you know, a, a gang member who's involved in some serious crime, and we want to get that person and take custody and remove him from the United States. The sanctuary counties are saying no, or they're saying, well, we'll give him to you after you jump through some hoops, and then the hoops are too onerous for ICE to do in a short period of time. So we've got to get rid of sanctuary counties. Laura Kelly wants to keep the status quo where yeah. we have sanctuary counties. I want to change it. What the state can do is encourage or discourage illegal aliens from remaining in the country. Mm -hmm. And I want to do everything we can to discourage illegal aliens from remaining in our state, remaining in the country, and go home. Because let's remember, that's all yeah. we're really asking is yeah. for people to return to their home country. Mm -hmm. And if they want to get in line and come in legally, fine, go ahead. But go home right now. Don't think that just because you broke into this country, you can stay here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where Kansas can it needs to significantly change its policies. Right now we've got a very, I think, radical kind of open borders policy in Kansas where we're saying, come on in, we'll give you in-state tuition, we'll give you welfare benefits, we even have sanctuary counties. Whereas I'm saying, no, we want to discourage this. And another policy that I'll do through an executive order is e-verify. And that is if, if, on government contractors. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a, a highway building company and you want to uh, get a contract to build a road in Kansas, uh -huh. you have to use e-verify so that all of your workers are US citizens or are mm -hmm. aliens legally in the United States. Uh, that's something I'll do right away to protect American jobs. All right, uh, now on to some lighter stuff. Uh, homecoming was this last weekend for us, and we asked our homecoming candidates some fun questions, so we thought it might be uh -oh. fun to ask you some. All right. So if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, I don't know, it depends on what the superpower is. I mean, can you go, like, things like knowing the future and things like that, or is that not really a superpower? Let's try to keep it below superpower. Below? Oh, they, they lie like, uh -huh. below, yeah. like, omniscience. Okay, I'd probably go with flying, then. Okay, all right. And if you were stuck on a tropical island and you could only eat one food, what would that food be? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, probably steak. Jayhawks or Wildcats? You know, uh, I didn't go to either college, so actually, I, I'm a fan of both. I know that yeah. sounds like a cop-out, but <laughs> I can be, because uh -huh. if, you, if you don't go to either one, you can cheer for both of them, so. Yeah. Chili's or Applebee's? Applebee's. Okay. Uh, burgers or hot dogs? Burgers. And Kelly or Kobach? <laughs> <laughs> Kobach. All right. Uh, all right. I want to thank you again for meeting down with us. Uh, good luck with your campaign. You. The election is November 6th, so make sure if you're eligible, get out and vote. Thank you again for meeting with us. My Mr. Pleasure. Kobach. All right. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Remember to stay tuned for Laura Kelly's interview tomorrow. We'll see you then, bikes. Stay classy.